All right, thank you for your patience. My presentation is sort of like an intermission because I want to talk about an issue that's not confrontational, not controversial. It's just an issue that's under the radar. And once people become aware of it, I think everybody here will be able to embrace the issue and support the issue, whether you are someone that wants to drill now or someone that never wants to drill, um, you will be able to embrace this issue so it's not controversial. Um, by way of full disclosure, as the other speakers have, uh, have indicated, um, I think that uh, local government is the foundation of our federal system. It's the level of government that provides the goods and services that affects everybody's lives on a daily basis education, streets, water, sewer. And the property tax is the foundation of a finance system for local governments. So I'm here as an advocate of a strong uh, property tax system. I think the property tax is much maligned and often misunderstood, so part of this presentation is just to try to address that information element. Um, why do we have a property tax? We have government to deliver these services and as a community we have to decide how we're going to share the cost of providing government services across all the people in the community, residents, businesses, and other people that come and visit our community. So the property tax is one way to allocate a part of the cost. In, in Garrett County, about 60 percent of the revenues for the county come from the property tax. So we want to look at how we administer the property tax and we want to do it in a way that is fair to all of the stakeholders in the community. Um, does everybody support the notion of fairness? Raise your hand. All right. I'm glad because it's not controversial. I was afraid it might be controversial. So if we want to administer the property tax in a uniform way that's going to be fair to everyone, we have to have the same base for the tax for all property owners. And that, in Maryland, is the market value of property. So if everybody pays a tax on the market value of their property, then my share of the tax payments to the county will reflect my share of the property tax base in the county. So that's my starting point for fairness. So we want a property tax that's going to be administered uniformly based on the market value of property. I don't really have a presentation. These are my talking points, so I don't forget what I want to say. Um, so I've got to, to, I've done the first two. So in reality, we have deviations from this ideal. Not all property is valued uniformly for tax purposes. For example, Maryland was the first state in the 1950s to come up with a program that supported farmers. We want to maintain agricultural uses. As someone that owns a business that depends on tourism, it's in my self-interest to have a strong farming community. So there's a law in Maryland that says if your property is used primarily for farming, you can apply for a program and you get preferential property tax treatment. Instead of being taxed at market value of your property like I am, farmers are taxed in some cases at only 10% of the market value of their property. So you're taking that property off of the tax base so that other taxpayers that don't get preferential treatment um, are paying somewhat higher property taxes. Um, but that's okay because it's in my interest to have a strong farming community. There are a lot of other deviations from this notion of uniformity. As a community, we've decided that uh, we're not going to tax churches. They're totally exempt. You take them off of the tax rolls entirely. Uh, Nonprofit organizations that provide different kinds of services, they're taken off the property tax rolls as well. So there's a lot of deviations from this notion of uniformity that reflect decisions that we make as a community because they accomplish other objectives that we want to accomplish as a community. Um, one time at the fourth point. One of the issues, well the issue that I want to talk about 
is that all of the mineral rights in Garrett County for Marcellus Shale, for Utica Shale, are currently exempt from paying property taxes. They're not part of the property tax base. There's a lot of, of, of um, reasons. I mean, historically, mineral rights haven't been part of the property tax base. So it's basically a result of inertia. There hasn't been any public discussion, and that's really what I want to do with this presentation, is raise the issue so we can have a public discussion. What are the consequences of not including mineral rights in the property tax base of Garrett County? So that was the issue that I uh, looked at. I'm trying to be brief because, uh, uh, like I said, I hope this is not controversial. I'm just trying to provide some information and get everybody's support. So there's um, two fundamental issues that come up when people start talking about this issue. One is, do we have the legal right to tax mineral rights? And uh, last year, I guess it was, the Department of Taxation and Assessment made a presentation to the governor's task force on Marcellus Shale that said, yes, we have the legal authority in Maryland statutes currently to tax mineral rights. And I think the quote is part of the, the report. So there is a legal right on the books now. Then the issue is, all right, we have a legal right, but how do we value these assets that are underground? Well, it turns out that um, Maryland legislation also says that if you have a lease that's for more than seven years and you register it with the county, you have to pay a recordation tax. And the recordation tax is based on the market value of the underlying asset, which is the gas in the ground. And current Maryland legislation sets out a methodology for how the, clerk, the, the um, clerk of the court is mandated to value those assets in the ground to collect the recordation tax. It's not a radical idea. It's the same approach that's used to value businesses, like uh, Smiley's Fun Zone and Pine Lodge Steakhouse, free advertising. Um, so it's not controversial. It's standard procedures. There's nothing new. There's nothing controversial. So we have the legal authority in Maryland in statutes, and we have a mandated methodology. So it seems we should be doing this, but we're not. What would happen if we did do it? Well, there's a, um, someone down in the Department of Economic Development um, has put together a compilation of the leases um, in Garrett County. that cover about 160,000 acres. Um, there's about 620 of these leases that are listed here. One of the pieces of information is how much is the acre of land leased for? Now this comes from the lease that the property owner in Garrett County has. And um, they had about a little less than half of the leases had that information filled in. Only covered about 50,000 acres, so about a third of the land. And the average lease price for the landowner in Garrett County was something about $14 an acre. Now these leases are then sold on a secondary market for up to two or $300 an acre. So what I did, I describe it as a back of the envelope order of magnitude estimate, so I wouldn't put any, those are caveats. I mean, it gives you an idea that we could be talking about real money. So I took the half of the leases that had information and said, all right, what if for these half, what if, what if we were getting $200 an acre instead of 14? Um, and apply that $200 to the 160,000 160, acres. Um, it would generate 
something in the order of six million dollars a year in additional property tax revenues. That's about 15 percent of current property tax revenues. The county collects about 46 million dollars in property tax revenues every year and uh, we could increase that by uh, six million or we could reduce uh, or we could maintain spending levels without reducing them because of the current financial situation the county commissioners are dealing with. So the policy issue as I see it, and I hope we'll all embrace this together, um, is for, for, the, for our elected officials. This is a policy issue for our county commissioners and unfortunately for our representatives in Annapolis and that's where we need your help. Um, because Garrett, I mean Deep Creek Lake I think pays something less than, uh, just less than 50% of property taxes in Garrett County. So your property taxes could be something in the order of 15% less on businesses, on farmers, on homeowners, on everybody in the county if we broaden the base to include all real property in the county and we don't exclude uh, mineral rights as well. Um, so I think it's significant, potentially significant. Um, action steps. Um, we need this, like I said, this is an issue that people aren't aware of. So the first thing is to help share this information with other people. So to the extent that you all can share this information with our commissioners and say, I understand that the financial problems our commissioners are facing, where they're raising taxes, my room tax just went up 20%, where they're raising taxes and cutting services. They're in a very difficult financial situation for reasons that are typically beyond their control. They don't control the housing market, they don't control what goes on in Annapolis. If you can tell them, look, we're tired of increased taxes, we're tired of reduced services, and here is a way to increase the resources that are available in the county just by treating people that control those mineral leases like all other businesses in the county. Why should the Fun Zone and Pine Lodge Steakhouse pay 15% higher property taxes so Chevron doesn't have to pay any? That to me is the policy issue. So ask that question, make that, uh, uh, share your views with the commissioners. The other thing is, uh, somebody mentioned we don't have a lease registry, it might have been Paul. In or all businesses in Garrett County have to provide the county government with information on their income, uh, revenues, and expenses, and that's what's used to value their commercial property taxes for property tax purposes. We want to do the same thing. People that own mineral rights should be treated the same as everybody else. We don't want to discriminate against businesses, residents, and landowners in Garrett County in favor of multinational corporations that aren't even doing business here. The base of the tax would be the leases. So if nobody leases their land, then there's no additional tax. So the other thing we need is a lease registry to provide the information necessary to come up with these estimated values. Remember the deed recordation tax only applies to deeds that are actually registered with the county and those are ones for over seven years. So we need to extend uh, that information to include all leases uh, going forward. So um, I hope I have not said anything confrontational or controversial. Hope we can all agree that this is a reasonable thing to do and under the heading of fairness, uh, multinationals operating in the county should be treated the same as businesses and residents here.